Coming up on this episode of Earth, we travel to Germany to see how lightweight innovation is driving the automotive industry toward CO2 neutrality. We take you to the Permian Basin of Texas, where oil exploration is taking a much cleaner energy direction. We introduce you to a U.S. company that is creating groundbreaking technology to prevent food waste and a global metal recycler that is turning yesterday's scrap into tomorrow's sustainable steel. Plus, a surprising look at how European technology is helping save our oceans by turning fishing net waste into fashionable carpet. That's all coming up on Earth. Hi, I'm John Holden. And I'm Andrea Ocampo. Welcome to Earth. We're starting off our show here in Attendorn, Germany. It's known for storied history and a lot of scenic places like Lake Bigassi, one of the largest reservoirs in Western Germany, providing clean water for the people and a, a scenic outlook for tourists. But this area is also known for innovations for the future, especially in the automotive industry. That innovative spirit is not only driving the future of e-mobility, but also protecting our cherished resources, as you're about to see. When you think of automobile engineering, sleek design, and comfort, certainly German innovation stands out. But today, climate protection, sustainability, and digitalization are the new goals and challenges for the automotive industry, with an overall goal for CO2 neutrality. So Professor, why is the goal of CO2 neutrality so important to the auto industry? Because the auto industry is responsible for about 20, 25 to 30 percent of the general output of carbon dioxide. So the auto industry knows that something has to be done. Most of the research and development in the automotive industry today is focused on this goal of CO2 neutrality and e-mobility. Let's say we are driven by the best, so our strategy is focused on light, efficient and global. Because we think that lightweight is really a possibility to save resources. Uh, and that means use material where material is needed and get rid of material where material is not needed. And all our innovations are focused on this lightweight. And innovative solutions to make vehicles lighter has been the focus of Mubea for more than two decades. With over 14,000 people at 45 locations in 20 countries working towards lightweight innovations in automotive design, Mubea has been able to support energy savings and significant CO2 reductions in the use of their products. Lightweight is the key to reduce the amount of energy that a vehicle needs to move from one spot to another spot. And reducing energy means reducing consumption. And reducing consumption means reducing emission. And that's what we're looking for. If you sum up for Mubea, I, I just calculate a little bit around, we would save uh, the emission of a town like Kansas City for all inhabitants. That's what we would have less of emissions on, on our products and the use of our products mainly than our competitor. This constant innovation underway at Mubea has been evident in the design and introduction of many new products for the chassis, body and powertrain of automobiles worldwide for both conventional and electrified vehicles. The new innovative parts may be small and inconspicuous, like these valve springs and stabilizer bars, but the resulting weight reduction, energy savings and driver protection can be substantial. With this vehicle, you can see a lot of opportunities uh, for our tailored road blank application where we can produce flat material with uh, a variation of thickness. You need to protect the driver. 
and therefore we do the material in the areas where the driver protection is important a little bit thicker and we do it thinner in the area where we would like to have deformation. Every single part in the vehicle can be designed in a better way and with, with intelligent uh, smart technologies on the material we can save weight and therefore can contribute to weight saving on the vehicle and then uh, energy efficiency of the vehicle. And it's not just lightweight components for vehicles. Mabea is also introducing special products for our transformation to e-mobility, like its very own e-cargo bike. Half bicycle, half truck. Hi John, yeah, our e-cargo bike is our very first micro-mobility vehicle. It's a pedelec, so it's a bike with electrical support and it can be driven up to 25 kilometers per hour. We believe that in the short term, especially in Europe, uh, city centers will be uh, gradually closed to the traffic, not only of combustion engine cars, but also electrical cars. So our Mobile Cargo will solve the uh, last mile problem and will reduce uh, significantly CO2 emissions and noise in urban centers. We follow also this big roadmap towards sustainability. What we currently do is also to consider our whole production to reduce uh, CO2 emission and our target is to reduce it by minus 25 percent until 2025 and to become zero until 2040. You know this planet Earth is small and the automotive industry has to act globally to save our resources it's going to mean constant innovation by companies like Mobea to support sustainability. Our next story takes us here to the Permian Basin of West Texas. This is ground zero for this country's constant search for oil and gas and a source of our country's energy independence. But if you're thinking of oil as a dirty business, then you're not thinking about all the innovation and technology that now goes into oil exploration. Let's take a look. We all want to protect our environment, reduce carbon emissions, and limit the use of fossil fuels through renewable energy. But at the same time, the oil and gas industry faces a constant challenge to produce safe, affordable energy to power the world and meet its daily demands. The public perception for our industry is largely negative, and that's despite the fact that our industry has got a track record of decades of delivering safe and affordable and reliable energy that helps us improve our quality of life or the human flourishment of the whole planet. Improving the environment Developing our resource responsibly and reducing our emissions are critical parts of our plan to reach net zero. Oil and gas production in today's oil fields are making significant strides in cleaner energy production, and their impact on our climate is constantly being reduced, thanks to technology developments like horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing. The U.S. has become a global leader in affordable and reliable hydrocarbon production. So fracking has revolutionized the industry. If you consider how conventional oil production was done in the United States, we used to drill a whole lot of wells and they went straight down into the ground. Now what we're able to do with fracking is you see four wells behind me, and with those four wells, those essentially replace in production what might take dozens, even a hundred wells to produce under the old conventional methods. Many of these innovations to reduce carbon emissions and increase efficiency in oil and gas production have been provided by Nextier. This oil field services provider has dedicated itself to finding clean solutions to safely and affordably unlock sources of energy for this country. Our company, we help our customers achieve low cost production, but we also now are trying to distinguish ourselves in the market by making it easy for our customers to also lower their carbon footprint by using natural gas as a primary power source. In fact, here at its facility in Midland, Texas, Nextier is innovating and maintaining what has now become the country's largest deployed natural gas-powered fleet of equipment for hydraulic fracturing. Now, this is really important because we're seeing results. In 2020, we were able to displace eight million gallons of diesel and replace it with cleaner burning natural gas. This year in 2021, 
We expect to be able to achieve even a higher number, possibly even 20 million gallons of diesel displaced and replaced with natural gas for power for our equipment. Offering equipment that supports gas substitution is just the first step. Next year also offers a unique digitally driven operating system called NextHub, which has helped reduce on-site personnel and equipment needed at the well site, while also remotely removing waste from oil field operations. This gives us the ability to, to predict failures before they occur, enable us to reduce the footprint of traffic on the road, and maybe most importantly of all now is we're moving in our direction of displacing diesel as a power source with more clean natural gas, we're able to see the displacement live as it occurs. So technology is making it easier and it's taking the risk out of operations. We're working with Next here on their low carbon solutions on the digital platform uh, to not only uh, keep people on location safe, but also to maintain the operating efficiency of our operations. Next year believes the best policy for the future is a policy of energy freedom in which all sources of energy, including fossil fuels, compete to produce the most reliable, low-cost energy for all the billions of people on this planet. History's kind of been the case where every country, once they are able to lower their poverty rates, they're able to spend more time on improving their environmental footprint. We believe that the fossil fuel industry is making that happen globally. No matter how remote the location, there are now digital integrated solutions for the delivery of clean fuel and the completion of well sites like this across the country. And that means a much cleaner energy future for our planet. Next up, field correspondent Andrea Ocampo is in Sandusky, Ohio. Tossing $240 billion worth of food into garbage cans sounds outrageous, but Americans do it every single year. It's an alarming statistic considering that more than 690 million people go to bed on an empty stomach each night worldwide. The problem is complicated, but preventable. Here in Sandusky, Ohio, Innovators are doing their part, creating groundbreaking tech, specifically focused on preventing and recovering food waste. Could it be a game changer for the circular economy? Let's take a closer look. In a vast world of almost 8 billion people where all you hear about are our differences, there are some important things that connect us. And one of these is food. So if we love food so much, why do we let so much of it go rotten in our fridges, get thrown out in our stores, or dumped off of our plates? Food is discarded at every point along the food chain. We want to make sure that we're getting the highest yield possible through the production process. The high yield means more pounds out the door, and we're taking advantage of the world's precious resources in doing that. A second way of doing that is to make sure we also have the best shelf life possible for these products. Flavor is everything and safety. A lot of our consumers are moms that buy products for children, their kids. They want to make sure their children are eating the best product they can and healthy product. So they look for the freshness, consistency of the product, the texture, the color. Global hunger isn't about a lack of food. Right now, the world produces enough food to nourish every man, woman, and child on the planet. But approximately 45% of all fruits and vegetables, 35% of fish and seafood, 30% of cereals, and 20% of meat and dairy products are wasted by suppliers, retailers, and consumers every year. JPT's broader mission is to make better use of the world's precious resources by providing sustainable solutions to our customers that enhances their success. More specifically, we provide equipment, information, expertise on food processing knowledge that helps improve yield, reduce water usage, and other areas that are focused on to improve the production of food. JBT focuses on food waste by really being close to the customer and the consumer, a deep understanding of our industry from our incredible legacy, um, as well as focusing on product design that ultimately ends in uh, food waste advantages. Our HPP technology is really key to food waste. 
What we do with that is we've innovated a process where pressure ultimately helps with the food uh, shelf life. It extends the food shelf life. It allows us to um, maintain flavor and nutrient profiles uh, while also making the food safe uh, for production. And during the process, we don't add any preservatives, chemicals, and we don't use any heat to treat the process. If you ate or drank something today, there's a good chance JBT played a critical role in its preparation. JBT partners with global and regional food producers by providing solutions designed to enhance their success in making better use of the world's precious resources. Our machine is called a DSI water jet portioner, and it's one of our offerings within JBT. It specifically uses water to portion uh, chicken into different products. So when we talk about water being also another uh, very precious resource, we go ahead and make sure that we use the most minimal amount of water possible in cutting that chicken. The company provides industrial equipment to the food supply chain at a production point between the farm and the distribution channel. JBT offers a holistic approach to its customers with a wide range of solutions that span nearly all food production and preservation spectrum, allowing the company to work with customer partners to craft big picture solutions that go beyond just a single product line. We see real challenges in the world when it comes to feeding the world. And we feel that by virtue of technology and expertise, we can really enhance and improve that situation throughout the world. Wasting less and adopting sustainable practices are key to building a world free of hunger. Little changes can make a huge global impact by stopping food loss and waste for the people and for the planet. A safe and healthy supply of food to the world is imperative, and the challenges will be met by companies like JBT. Our next story takes us here to Arizona. You know, climate change and infrastructure are hot topics these days, but even with all the talk about building highways and hospitals and power systems, there's not much talk about eco-friendly construction. The fact is, steel to make all those things releases a lot of greenhouse gases, unless you come to a place like Mesa, Arizona, and the way they make steel. Steel, it's necessary to support most all structures for infrastructure and commercial construction, and extremely high temperatures are required to melt the steel that produces concrete reinforcing steel known as rebar. Traditional blast furnace steel making methods use plenty of energy and natural resources, so they emit excessive amounts of carbon dioxide. In fact, on average globally, every ton of steel produced emits nearly two tons of CO2. In total, steel making accounts for about 5% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Steel is one of the most important engineering, construction, and manufacturing materials in the world. We use it every day. I think to make steel more eco-friendly, John, we need more industrial electrification. And by that I mean we need more steel being produced with electric arc furnace using metal as the raw material, recycled metal, and electricity as the power source. Steel produced by EAF producers is up to 75% less in CO2 emissions than blast furnaces. One such green steel producer using the electric arc furnace is Commercial Metals Company, headquartered in Irving, Texas, and a global leader in metal recycling and sustainable steel manufacturing. Really, environmental stewardship is at the heart of this company and it started with our roots. We're a company that's over 100 years old. We started as a recycling company and we were green before green was cool. Now, with 184 facilities in the U.S. and Poland, CMC is the largest rebar producer in the U.S. And here in Mesa, Arizona, at what's called its micro mill, is their new innovative process using EAF technology, where the company collects scrap metal, melts it, and forms it into steel rebar in a single, uninterrupted process. The arc at the tip of the electrode is hot enough to raise the temperature of the steel and um, to give you molten steel, liquid steel. And in fact, behind us here is the last heat that we made and you can see the temperature of the steel was 
2,995 degrees. And there are a number of benefits when you use recycled material. It's much more energy efficient. Um, it's a lot more flexible cost structure. But first and foremost, we're not we're reusing a material that would otherwise be waste. So we were the first to construct and operate a micro mill producing rebar right here in Mesa, Arizona. And we're not done with that yet. The efficiencies, environmental benefits were so profound that we are now constructing a second generation micro mill that will not only produce rebar, but will produce merchant products. The development of the micro mill takes the green steel making process to the next level by producing steel rebar in a single uninterrupted strand from melting to casting to rolling. It totally eliminates the need for the natural gas reheat furnace, thereby reducing overall energy consumption and emissions from burning that energy. Now it may be hidden from view inside concrete structures, but rebar supports highways and hospitals, stadiums and skyscrapers. Rebar really is the backbone of modern infrastructure. You'll see CMC steel in almost everywhere you can turn. You can see it in the Tappan Zee Bridge in New York. You can see it at the Pentagon. You can see it at AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Uh, you can see it on many of the big bridges in California. So really everywhere you can turn you can see CMC steel. Our recycling operation really supports a circular economy. We take scrap metal that would generally be discarded into landfills and we turn it into a new usable steel product that can be seen all throughout America. Steel is not going away and at Commercial Metals Company we're going to continue to innovate and find ways to make it more efficiently and continue our green roots. So yesterday's scrap is really tomorrow's steel through metal recycling, renewable energy and innovation. CMC is committed to what it really does best, making sustainable steel to help hold our world together. Our next story takes us here to the heart of southern Germany and the town of Denkendorf, where Swabian culture and ancient historic sites, like this monastery built in the year 1129. You know, this tiny village is landlocked and a good day's drive from the ocean. But we're going to explore how Denkendorf is still closely connected to the ocean and helping clean our oceans in unexpected ways. Most of us are aware that plastic pollution is overwhelming our planet's oceans, with at least 8 million tons encroaching surface waters, settling deep into floor sediments. About 10% of all that plastic, nearly 750,000 tons, is made up of abandoned fishing nets, also known as ghost nets. An environmental group called Healthy Seas harvests these old fishing nets from seas around the planet. In a strategic alliance, Healthy Seas works with volunteer divers from Europe's Ghost Fishing Foundation to recover massive nylon nets set adrift by fishing boats. They're found draped over rocks, reefs, or shipwrecks. If left down there, they become death traps for marine creatures such as sharks, dolphins, seals, and reef fish. And even if removed, many old fishing nets wind up in landfills. But not these. From waste to the world of fashion, these ghost nets and other nylon waste are processed by another environmentally conscious company called Aquafil into a durable, high quality yarn called Econil Regenerated Yarn. When we speak about Econil, Econil is made entirely from waste, so 100%. But we want that at least 50% of these wastes are represented by post consumer waste such as fishing nets and carpet flooring. So we recycle several thousand of tons of fishing nets per year. From waste such as old fishing nets to yarn to the carpet beneath our feet. That brings us far inland from the ocean, right back here to Denkendorf, and a company called Object Carpet, which uses sustainable Econil yarn to make brand new carpets and rugs. The good thing about fishing net as, a, as well as uh, other materials is that the material which is used for fishing net is the same material we use for carpets. So it's nylon uh, and uh, with nylon you can do 
sustainable, long-lasting carpets in any kind of design, in any kind of uh, color. And the nylon has the uh, advantage that you can recycle it again and again. This place is so enormous, you really need a couple days to take everything in. With more than 1,400 styles and colors of rugs and carpets, Object Carpet sells mostly to architects, interior designers, and commercial contractors. Carpets made right here in Germany to the company's strict quality standards, which include a commitment to environmental sustainability. He has a wide range of carpets in all kinds of colors and structures. For example, here we have a nice uh, product newly developed by a uh, German architect, Ippolito Flights Group. Uh, which is 100% recycled and made from fishnets and uh, waste. We have the chance to work together with good partners uh, like Aquafil, which are producing the 100% uh, recycled uh, fiber. We are now using 70% of all of our, our carpets. We use that uh, fiber and our aim is in the next two years to have 100% recycled and recyclable uh, fibers in our carpet and to have it Real circular. The most important thing is to create the carpet to reuse, to, to recycle content, to make a design for the future. Each product we offer to our clients has to do with our company DNA like sustainability, health and design. So design is what you can see, uh, sustainability is somehow what is inside the product, the ingredients and the health issue is uh, what it uh, is the impact to the to the customer, to the humans who work and live on the carpet. As these very low emission carpets can protect people's health, they have been awarded the Blue Angel Eco Label from the German Federal Environmental Agency. We've proven that uh, yesterday's waste can be the carpet for the future. So the next time I walk across a carpeted floor, I know I'm going to wonder whether part of it comes from nylon waste, possibly from the ocean floor making the full circle as what Object Carpet likes to call from waste to style.